Gentleman Jim back again. This is the second of the series for the tie sew along. <clears throat> I told you guys, get you a tie to use as our pattern piece. Reason, the tie is constructed the way it should finish. And I'm going to show you guys the details of what I said when I said get a tie. Open the tie. Take the filler out of the tie. Take the lining piece off of the tie. And that's what I have in front of me. An open tie, the filler, the lining for the small tip, the lining for the big tip. Now, remember, I told you about the crease marks that you'll see on the tie. Just make slight indentations of them because they're not true to form because the tie shifts, it's on a bias, and it stretches. Now, here's the reason why. The tie itself, as you see, is a lot bigger than the filler. The filler is actually the shape of the tie. So, once you have it separated there and have a few indications of where the crease marks are, this is what happens first. Once we cut the liner, let me just lay this up here so you'll see some things I want to explain to you. If you notice, right here, that the lining is smaller than the physical shape of the tie. Here's the reason why. When you sew this on the edge, and that's why I said you could see the crease marks. Now, on a solid tie, it's easier to see them, but if you don't, you will still see where the fold mark is. The reason why the tie is called a jacket and the lining are smaller in size is because when you stitch it on, you want that mitered corner to roll so that the lining is on the inside. See how that is? So you see this little edge? You don't want it flush because the edge might roll over on you. So that's why it's larger. Same thing with the tip. So if you cut that, make some indications. I told you to make some indications where the crease was. I didn't necessarily mean to physically flatten it off. But what I do want you to do is, before you do this, press the tie good and hard so you can see where the crease is. We're not necessarily going to physically crease it now. We just want to know where to put it back. Once you've done that, when the tie physically, when you've done the tip, the tips are very, very important to get those cleanly. See how that looks? See how the bottom looks? You want to make sure you get these points cleanly because this is what happens. Once you get this in and you miter the corner, the tie will get wrapped in the jacket, meaning that one side is flat and it'll show you that and it'll lay on the tie. The other side, which will have a little crease mark, will cover the raw edge with a clean edge. And that's why the crease mark is there. So we get a nice clean edge on one side. This whole thing will wrap around the tie because this filler will get inserted in once it's stitched and turned. So it'll go in like that. Now, at that point, at that point, we'll sew the two ends together. Now we have the full length of the tie. We'll have the full length of the tie at that point. This is the width of the tie. So it doesn't matter what size tie you get, but you want to get one because when you finish this is your full width, right here, right here. Now, on a lot of the patterns that you buy to make a tie, 
One of the reasons why it's confusing is, is because they give you slight indications. This is why I say if you get a tie, you get the filler for little or nothing. You also get a hint of where it's supposed to go. When they just have a plain piece of paper that's this part and this part, you're kind of guessing at it. So with your original time, you can see where certain things fold over to wrap the inner part there. So once you've done that, now I've asked you guys to get a tie. Now, I'm going on. Now, if you're not up with me, I'm going on. Now, this piece here, like I told you, is cut in three pieces. And once again, I said that was determined by the manufacturer on how many ties that he wanted to get out of his fabric. You get two or you're going to get three. This could be longer or shorter depending on the length of the tie. The length of the tie, mind you, is determined by whoever's wearing the tie. So when you knot it over, you want the tie to finish in a certain position on you to where it doesn't hang too long and it's not too short. So that's what happens. Now, at that point now, we are ready to cut these pattern pieces off of our material.